The readings for today is from Ernest Holmes. He says, love overcomes both, both hate and fear. However, love does not overcome hate and fear through controversy, argument, or force, but by a subtle power of transformation, transmutation, and sublimation. It is invisible in its essence, but apparent through its act. As light overcomes the darkness, as the presence of heat causes the coolness of a room to change until it is warm and comfortable, so the radiant action of love and peace dissipate fear, hate, and confusion. Love is the victor in every case. Love breaks down the iron bars of thought, shatters the walls of material belief, severs the chain of bondage through which thought has imposed, and sets the captive free. And so it is. So I find it pretty amazing. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever prepared for a talk or to give some sort of presentation. Um, and so in, pre in preparing for this talk, I just kind of get quiet and see what comes to the surface. And boy, was I not happy. <laughs> no matter how much I tried to avoid the specific angle that I'm going to attempt, on this topic of love and action. It wrestled me, tackled me, grabbed me, just this was what it was supposed to be. So in essence, I had prepared this talk for myself, but y'all just get to be, you know, <laughs> eavesdrop into this. So in thinking about the topic of love and action, what does this really mean? The one thing that kind of continually came to me were these questions. What's the one thing about love that I wish someone had told me a long time ago? What was the one thing, had I known from the beginning about love, would have completely changed my life from then until now? Instead of kind of stumbling upon this concept, what was the one thing about love that I want you to know? What the, was the, this one important thing about love that will be, hopefully, will flip a switch? Is everybody in a really deep sense of suspense? <laughs> you can tell. You're on your edge of your seats. <laughs> so what rose to the surface as the answer to all of these questions is that, everybody ready? It is absolutely impossible to love others without a deep and abiding love for yourself. We cannot effectively and genuinely love give, serve, act in love if we have not first begun this process with ourselves. It just can't be done. I have tried any which way to figure out how it can be done, but it can't. It, it, it really can't be done and us reflect what it truly means to love if we have not first started this process. Now, I hear you groaning. Inside, I can t I'm, I'm internally groaning at this, this too. It's not an easy task. But I would assert that it is the most important and meaningful task in this conversation about love. So many, so, some of you may or may not know that I'm a clinical social worker. And I remember it like it was yesterday, even though it has been many yesterdays ago, that I finished grad school and I was gonna save the world. This was my calling in life. So I set out to meet the need and love every single person that came through my door. To do everything in my power to fix, 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 fix. In this whole like idea of saving the world, which I think is some sort of viral infection you get after you um, graduate from uh, with a social work degree. It's this infection that's kind of really hard to get rid of. Um, <laughs> probably some other professions too. Um, but I put in countless hours of service, sometimes without pay, just to uh, this idea that I was loving everybody, and I felt really good about that. Now, believe me when I tell you, and I don't care what anyone else says. This cannot be sustained for any period of time before you crash and burn physically, 
mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And what I was doing in its truest form was not love. I had become like this poster child for a person that really needed to understand self-love. And had I known that you also needed a master's degree in self-love, it might save me a little time and money. Now, this may sound a little bit uncomfortable for folks when we talk about self-love, um, and it's, it, it continues to be a learning process for me because our upbringing is like, we don't want to be selfish, we don't want to think about ourselves, we want to think about others, even sometimes you know, our religious organizations sometimes um, we have that mindset, and in societal influences, we have that mindset. Um, but that's not what I mean by self-love. I would assert that self-love is our highest spiritual practice. It is honoring and caring for that space of the divine that resides in each of us. Then, loving and acting from that space. So what does this look like and how do we start? Would y'all like to start today? All right, we're going to work on it. We're going to work on it. So I find it helpful when talking about spiritual practices to actually kind of equate it with something in real life. Um, it makes it real and not boring, hopefully. Um, but it kind of gives you an, something you can look at and say, okay, well, that makes sense. So while Dusty said the title today was Love in Action, Actually, I'm going to change that title. It should be more aptly entitled, Triathlons, A Crash Course in Self-Love. <laughs> so for me, cultivating uh, and perfecting this idea of self-love is comparable to training for a triathlon. Now, who, is, who has ever run a triathlon? Nice. Excellent. Crazy people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let me stage, set the stage a little bit for folks who have not done this. Uh, what it looked like for me to train for my first and my last triathlon. <laughs> and I'm going to try to equate each component with the spiritual practice of self-love. And how we can step more fully into this love and action concept. So a triathlon consists of three events. Swimming, biking, and thank God finally running. And so depending on the type of triathlon, the distances are different. And thankfully, I ran a sprint, which means the distances were small. Otherwise, I probably would not be standing here today. So finally, after I had kind of talked myself into it and had some other people kind of talk me into it, signed up for the triathlon. And so I embarked on this training process, um, which consisted of hours in the pool, hours on the bike, uh, miles and miles and miles of running. And as I got closer to training, then I would do two of those things in one day, back to back, practicing. And then I got even closer, then I would kind of simulate the entire, um, you know, all three events. At, that should have been my red flag there, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm not sure this is, this is exactly how you're supposed to train. Dusty was the professional, so I'm sure she knows. Um, but this is how I did it. And throughout the entire process, I also focused on nourishing my body right foods, right amount of protein, right amount of carbs, a right amount of hydration, uh, reducing stress, which means kind of removing some folks in my life for a period of time. Um, just all these things that were just nurturing my body and preparing me for this, uh, this action that I was, was going to embark on, truly taking care of myself in every way possible. I mean, if I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. I had the outfit and everything. Now, I had an idea about giving the entire talk in my triathlon suit, <laughs> but the censors um, voted against that. So. <laughs> it would not have been pretty anyway. Um, all right, so let's pause on this uh, story and kind of like, let's kind of dive into what does this have to do with self love? So, this is exactly the process that we have to embark on where we're going to cultivate this unique spiritual practice of self love. And so this process can be broken down into some steps, and so we're going to equate these with this, these triathlon steps. Okay, first, we have to nourish ourselves. What does that mean? Now, I've told you what that means kind of in a practical sense, eating the right foods, all that good stuff. So from a spiritual sort of uh, idea, nourishing ourselves and cultivating this self-love is practicing those things that bring us joy, practicing those things that bring us a sense of well-being, 
knowing those things in our lives that bring us in alignment and actually doing them. We all know those things. We know those things that our body and our souls need to be in, a, in alignment and in balance. And it's just stepping into that. Um, nourishing our bodies, food, water, moderate amount of exercise. Um, nourishing our minds through meditation, compl- contemplative practices, reading, and also nourishing our emotions. So focusing on and enhancing those relationships um, that bring us joy and love and support. This is all a part of self-love. All right, the second part, we've nourished ourselves. Second part, we're going to jump into the triathlon. We ready? Got your swimsuits on? First part is the swim. Now, let me tell you, I had trained for this swim, and I had it down pat. I jumped in that water as if I had never swam before. I thought I sunk to the bottom and just was like, oh, my God. But I digress. Um, For me, this symbolizes this immersion in this understanding of who we are, of who we truly are. Just have that whole idea of baptism and just being immersed in this understanding of who we are, focusing on our breath, bringing us back to the present moment. And water has often symbolized life. And this awareness kind of directs us to this understanding of the divine indwelling presence of the spirit that's within us. And it connects us to all of life. So by understanding who we are at our core, when we truly understand that, immerse in that understanding, the only response to ourselves is love, if we truly understand who we are. So Parker Palmer, which I love, is quoted by saying, and this one really smacked me in the face, in a good way, in a good way, Self-care and love is never a selfish act. It is simply good stewardship of the only gift I have, the gift I was put on this earth to offer others. In this community, we're always talking about creating a world that works for everyone, talking about wanting to take this peace and this presence that we, we know and to share it with others. And this is how we do it. We have to take care of this peace and presence in order to be able to share it with others. So the second park in our bike, in our triathlon metaphor, is the bike. Oh, now I had this one down pat. I love the bike. So it's been my experience, though, uh, on a bike, um, that there are ups and downs, hills. There were a lot more hills on this course than I had envisioned, but... um, you know, sometimes there are those gentle rolling hills that kind of make you kind of look around and say, oh, what beautiful scenery. And then sometimes there are those steep, make you want to swear and smack someone hills. Um, and so this is kind of uh, representative of the, these barriers to self-love. Um, you know, those traits, those behaviors, those things in ourselves that we have a hard time accepting, have a hard time loving. Um, those aspects of ourselves that we might want to change or grow, um, these are kind of our, um, our uphill experiences. They're valuable in understanding, but it, it becomes a little bit more different, uh, difficult um, to really love those, um, those parts of ourselves, and we really have to work at it. And we really have to kind of bear down and focus on that. Now, the downhill, those are the, the, the uh, parts of ourselves that we really like. You all, you, everyone knows those parts of yourself that you, really, that you really like. So it takes both. This uphill and downhill, the things that we really um, kind of want to cultivate some change and growth in our lives and those things that we really um, love about ourselves and we want to continue to foster that love. Um, so we have to have acceptance of both the uphill and the downhill. Everybody with me so far? Okay. Sometimes this makes sense in my mind and then when I start saying it, I'm like, ooh, I'm not sure if that made sense. Okay. We're going to go with it because you said yes. All right. So six steps in cultivating self-love. Okay. Step number one, foster mindfulness. Now this kind of is, it's kind of a different type of mindfulness. This is a mindfulness that's focused on you. What you feel, what you think, your desires, those things that really bring joy in your life. Slow down, begin to notice those things. Also, 
I know I'm not the only one that's really good at this. Slow down and really focus about the things that you're saying about yourself that aren't necessarily the truth. Sometimes we say things to ourselves that we would never say to anyone else. So really being really aware of that. And with this knowledge that we are individualized expressions of the one presence, the one spirit, there's nothing but good to say. That's not to say that we don't have opportunities to grow, but that's what they are, they're opportunities to grow. So number two, practice self-care. Commit to healthy activities, which we talked about, you know, eating right, giving your body what it needs, get enough sleep, get enough play, social interactions. When you show yourself love in these ways, you continue to take care of your needs. And when you can, can take care of yourself, then you can take care of everyone else. You can act in love. You can act in service towards others. That you're, you're giving from a, you're not pouring from an empty cup. I know you, a lot of y'all have heard that before. Can't be done. Step number three, boy, this was a hard one. I tried to get around this, believe me, but I, forgive yourself. Now, there are things in our lives that we need to own and take responsibility for. But really trying to reframe those things in our lives, those, those mistakes in our lives, or those you know, times where we kind of miss the mark a little bit as ways and opportunities for us to grow. Number four, set boundaries. Number four, set boundaries. <laughs> Being able to set limits and say no to activities and interactions and, and things that deplete us, that harm us physically, emotionally, spiritually, out of self-love and compassion. You don't have to say yes to everything. I mean, I learned that like last week. <laughs> Imagine my surprise to say yes to everything. There are t things that we're going to have to do that we, are not our favorite. I don't like to grocery shop. But just saying yes to those, it's okay to say no to those things that, um, that are not in alignment. And it's okay to say no in this act of self-love and compassion. Step five. Now, I'm g I edited this, but this is not what I tell myself. Uh, let stuff go. That is the edited version, the PD ver PG version. <laughs> Oftentimes, the things we hold on to the tightest are the things that do not serve us. I mean, just, we have this death grip on these things in our lives. Our anger, our doubt, our disappointments, our fears, our reservations, all those things we hold so tightly to these things. And the only purpose this serves us is to block us from experiencing love for ourselves for others it blocks us from receiving love from ourselves and from others let it go it just it doesn't serve us there's so many things to wonderful things to step into and last of the points, don't get excited, I'm not done yet. <laughs> to the point, Baz is getting excited here in the front row. <laughs> live intentionally. When you live with purpose and meaning, when you have really dug deep and know those things in your life that bring you joy, that bring you passion, that just bring this sense of well-being, live intentionally from that space. And you can only do that through this act of self-love. By aligning ourselves with spirit, we're able to act and love from this space of centeredness and balance. And this is not acting to, to uh, uh, this is not giving love to get love. This is not giving love to feel loved. This is just living from this space. Now back to triathlon metaphor. The last part, the run. Now this is the really fun part. Once we have nourished ourselves on those aspects of our heart, mind, and soul, and we learn to listen to our inner voice and respond to those things that are truly cultivate awareness of who we are, and we accept those things, um, our strengths and our challenges about ourselves, 
and choose to give those areas of challenge some gentle attention and opportunities to grow. We can step out walking or running and to what it truly means to love in action. This is a love that overflows from a place of love. This is a love that can offer others what it truly means to be loved. Because it's had practice. We've had practice on the inside doing this, so can we can really show this to others when we've cultivated this practice in ourselves. This is a love that can offer love from a healthy space and not a space of trying to get love but loving and giving because we truly are love. That's the key. Loving and serving from a space because we embody the divine within. Loving becomes an activity of our lives only when we're kind of really clear about who we are and make a commitment to love that person no matter what because we are individualized expressions of the one power, the one source, the one love. But it is only in recognizing our own truth that we can see that in others. Henry Palmer, which I don't believe is uh, uh, kin to Parker Palmer, it just happened this way, says, and this was life-changing, so open your ears, this completely has changed my understanding of love and self-love. When you adopt the viewpoint, he says, that there is nothing that exists that is not part of you, there is no one who exists who is not part of you, that any judgment you make is self-judgment, that any criticism you level is self-criticism, you will wisely extend yourself an unconditional love that will be the light of the world. When we focus on and learn to cultivate love for ourselves, we are able to love others. By caring for yourself, you care for the world and those people in your sphere of influence. Our actions of love become this ripple effect. And it's only then that love becomes an activity of our lives. It's only then that we can step into this love of action. Love in action, not of action. And I'll repeat what uh, Babs read from Ernest Holmes because, you know, he's the man. Um, This is from his 1966 work, um, Effective Prayer. So this is long before me and maybe some of you. Um, He said, lover overcomes both hate and fear. However, love does not overcome hate and fear through controversy, argument, or force, but by a subtle power of transformation, transmutation, sublimation. It is invisible in its essence, but apparent through its act. As light overcomes the darkness, as the presence of heat causes the coolness of a room to change until it's warm and comfortable, so the radiant action of love and peace dissipates fear, hate, and confusion. Love is the victor in every case. Love breaks down the iron bars of thought, shatters the walls of material belief, severs the chains of bondage which thought has imposed and sets the captive free. That is the promise of a life that is truly loved from the inside out. Love is an inside job, and the overflow is this divine love in action. So there are many cool things about triathlons. My favorite part, truth be told, was the end. Like I said before, I jumped in and thought I was going to drown in that pool. But the, another amazing part of uh, the triathlon, the one that I was at, um, was the finish line. And um, unbeknownst to me, I had like 15 of my closest friends who knew I was going to do this triathlon. I was just trying to just sneak in and do it, not tell anybody because I don't want to embarrass myself. But as I'm coming, as I am stumbling across, I mean, gracefully, running across the finish line. I was met by this crowd of folks, and they're cheering and hugging and holding these really embarrassing signs that I cannot repeat what they said. Um, And it was just amazing. So this is another part about embodying love. The recognizing that we do not exist in a vacuum. We were born for community. 
We were born for love. We were born for relationship. That is just the way it is. Surrounding ourselves with a blessed community like we have here. Surrounding ourselves with friends and loved ones that will stand behind us, that sometimes will hold the truth for us when it's hard for us to hold it ourselves. I've had many people have to hold the truth until I could pick it up myself. This is also, this just demonstrates the amazing movement and action of love. The reciprocal nature of this divine love. We talk about the reciprocal nature of the universe. This give and take, this flow. That which is within, once we've nurtured that self-love within, flows out to others and comes right back to us. That's the way love works. That is love in action. Always moving, never stagnant. So as I crossed the finish line, a medal was placed around my neck. Okay, that was one of the best parts too. I like medals. <laughs> Not that I did really anything to earn it except survive. So th it really was a, t a testament to the fact that I had survived and I was not yet dead. Um, so I wanted to give you a little visual reminder. A reminder that we're all in this together. A reminder, a reminder that the transformative nature of love begins with us. And through our own awareness of the divine within, we're able to see this love in action in everyone and everything we see. So I have a little gift. Where, is, where are the offering plates? That's not the gift, but yeah. <laughs> so I have a little medal for everyone. Um, so I want everyone to take this medal, and then I'll give you instructions afterwards. Once you get it. This is not the exact replica of the medal that I received, but we're working on a budget here. <laughs> it's just a reminder, a reminder that the importance of self-love, a reminder that as individualized expressions of the one power and presence, our only response to ourselves is can be love. Everybody got one? And if you need a double reminder, you can take two. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, Amazon either shipped 10 or 100, so we've got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody got it? Yep. All right, place it around your neck. I know it's not cool, but it's cool right now. I want everyone to say... I am love in action. I am love in action. And so it is. And so it is. All right. <laughs> so let's turn within one moment. And I really like everyone with their medals. This is the way life should be. Walking around with a medal. Hmm. So as I turn within, I'm keenly aware of the love that is in this room. The love that is everywhere present. That there's not a space and place in this entire universe where this love is not found. And what I know about this love is that it has its home in me. Lives in me. Lives through me and as me. And so if this love is everywhere and there's nowhere that we can go to escape it, and if it's in me, then it is in everyone in this room. So from this awareness, I speak a word on us in this moment. Knowing that there's a place in us where this pure love resides. And knowing that there is nothing seen or unseen that can change that fact. And knowing that 
as difficult as it may be sometimes, we do have the ability to live from that space. And man, what would that look like? To live from that space every day. Because it's the truth of who we are. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity starting in this moment to live from that space. To truly recognize and love that space within me. So we release these words into a law that only ever says yes. Knowing even in this moment it is bubbling up and becoming a reality. We are love in action. And so it is. So it is.